Hey everybody, so this is going to be my YouTube review part 2 because the first one that I did was back in November of 2010 when I made Partner and at that point I had only been on YouTube for about a year. So a lot of people say may say, well, when did you start your channel? I started my channel in um, August of 2009. So if you can scroll all the way down um, to my videos on, at the very first one that says August 16th, 2009, and that was one of my first videos that I uploaded. That wasn't my one of my that wasn't the very first one, but I had older ones that had music to them, and I just had to take those down for copyright issues. So I'll just say my two year anniversary was marked August 16th of 2000 from 2009. So that marks two years. And I couldn't make a video last week because I was a little bit busy. So my anniversary video is late. So I just started to make, I, the reason why I started my YouTube channel was that um, I already had this account, which is the name is called You Love Megs. And to me, that does not sound like a video posters channel that you want people to, to find you as. You Love Megs was mainly my, um, my, a uh, name, uh, it was like something that I used to say to this person I used to see. I was like, what are you saying? You love Megs, don't you? Don't you just love her like that? I would just play around with him like that. And that's what I used to say <laughs> to him. So that was just a kind of like a random name that I chose for my username on YouTube because I used to watch videos myself and leave comments for other people. So when someone, when I started my um, hair journey in 2008, someone kept asking me, can you do a video on your eyebrows? Because I would post pictures of my hair and of course me and I would have makeup on and my eyebrows would be a certain way. And people wanted to see how I did that. So I thought it would be easier for me to do a video versus to write it out and for people to actually see how I did it. Now I posted that video or a few videos before that and other people started to watch that video. But my intention was it was only for this specific group of people that were on KISS who asked me to um, show them how I did my eyebrows. So once I posted it on that YouTube channel and I posted the link for people to those specific group of people to watch from my profile, other people started to watch. And then I started to get questions on maybe how I did this one hairstyle on this one picture from KISS or how I did this or that from KISS. So, other people started to watch my channel that weren't specifically just from KISS. It was other people maybe in the YouTube realm or wherever. Now, once I figured that people were actually start to watch my videos, I didn't make consistent videos. It would I would make like a video once a month or so because I just didn't figure anyone wanted to watch me. But once I started, um, uh, I started, I continued to start to make videos. Um, mainly they were hair and makeup videos back then, um, but um, it was this one video, is my hair oils video, and that was my most viewed video. Now what happened was I had one popular video, I guess, and other people started to flock to my channel. I guess it was because of my voice. <laughs> That's what I noticed. They're because of my voice. And that video, I had a few negative comments on that video just because of what it appeared that I was a, a ditz or a bubble head because of my voice. I was very chipper. And what people do not know in that hair oil, a little info information is that I actually was in the background of that video making fun of me and making faces. So that's why I seemed really happy and ditzy and my voice was really high and I was excited. So that's that. So what I assumed was if you have one popular video and it just gets shared to other places, then, you know, that's how people find your channel and subscribe. So um, after I figured that people start watching them, I was a part of other social networks. And I just started kind of just networking my channel throughout the, net, the different networks. Like I'll post it on my personal Facebook. I had a MySpace back then and I had 10,000 uh, friends for no apparent reason back then and I had a KISS uh, account so I just post my link a few times throughout the month and that was it. 
And as far as networking your channel, this is just basically to answer people's question on how to network. I'm not saying I'm a network queen and know just absolutely what I'm doing, but putting tags underneath your videos helps people find you. Now you may ask, what is your channel about? Because you just have so many different things on here. At first, my channel wasn't supposed to be about anything that it's about now. Like, I don't understand how it happened. But naturally, if I'm talking about my hair, and I have on some earrings that you may be interested about, which I'm probably going to get a question about, and these are from Forever 21, someone may say, well, next time you go shopping, can you do a haul video? Because I really like the earrings you wear now. Like, so that's how different videos get infused onto your channel. Or someone likes my makeup, someone may say, hey, can you do a makeup tutorial? Because I really like your makeup. So that's how my channel got kind of mixed and twirled around to different kinds of videos. My throat is dry. <clears throat> Keep some water around. So, um, yeah, that's basically how it why my channel is the way it is because I just have a lot of different videos about hair, makeup, hauls, blabber, randomness, vlogs, everything. So someone say why when you do tutorials why does it seem like you repeat yourself all the time? I only do that because I know people think differently and learn differently just based off myself. I learn a lot different than a lot, pe a lot of people and some people may have the same similarity with me that it takes me a little bit longer to pick something up and I have to hear it over and over again for me to understand what you're saying, especially if I'm in a learning setting. So the way, the reason why I kind of like over explain things is just because I know how I am to understand something. So I wouldn't think it would be fair if I say, okay, I co-wash with VO5 and you just put that in your hair and that's it. I like to go really in depth in things that I'm talking about because I never know how someone else thinks and you never know if this is someone's very first time ever hearing this technique ever on YouTube and they just don't know. And sometimes your video may be the first time they've ever heard of any technique ever. So I like to be as detailed as possible if I need to say it over and over again to re eliminate any repetitive questions in the bottom bar to help people out that's what I'll do and I really don't have a problem with that so I do take the extra time explaining things or if my video is an extra two minutes then maybe Susie's video so be it that's just how I like to do it because I have young viewers out there I have uh, 11 and 12 year olds watching my video and they say thank you because it's really easy to follow and understand your videos and I personally think it's fair if you do it that way because Everyone thinks differently and doesn't learn or hear things the same way as if I were to just rush through and say, hey, this is VO5, just wash your hair with that. So, basically, that's it. Now, being on YouTube, you will experience some mean comments and people being really overcritical of things that probably aren't as serious as, to, as needed. Um, and for those people, I feel like they may not understand maybe how hard it may be to post videos. Because if you really feel like you tried really hard to make an informative video and someone still has something kind of rude to say, it's only because they really don't understand what goes into making a video. Um, or they don't understand themselves because they don't have a photo up or they don't even have one video up to understand how it even is on YouTube. So that's why if I feel like I don't like something, I just don't say anything at all because I know for that person who posted that video how hard it probably, it really is to, um, keep a good morale on your channel and to post videos and keep everything positive because there's always going to be someone that says something very negative only because they don't understand how much time and patience and how sometimes how time consuming it can be to make YouTube videos. Now the pros to this is that you're helping people. For me, I, I, I like making YouTube videos. Um, even though the, the more traffic that I'm getting on my channel, it's harder for me to answer people's comments and it's harder for me to get as many videos out as I would like to. But I really enjoy making YouTube videos. Um, I wouldn't, I never thought that I would be a YouTube poster and I don't think I'm a guru because some people put the word guru on a, a higher pedestal than needed when I just feel like I'm a regular girl and I just make videos. So. Being on YouTube is really interesting. I'm starting to get recognized being out and I really think that's cool that people stop and say hi and it's just really fun. You get to network, meet people and just basically have fun. I do this as pure fun and for you to be on YouTube you have to have fun in order to do this because if you feel like you're forcing yourself to make a video 
it won't come off as good. So you just have to have a good positive attitude and be happy. Because people want to watch people who are happy, you know? You can't just be like, oh, hey, YouTube, it's Megan, I'm going to talk about this. You got to be happy to be on here, and that's what I am, you guys. <laughs> I just love it. So, um, blabber, thanks for watching, you guys, and just kind of a little small blabber for you guys. If you have any questions, you can put that down in the bottom bar. And always, thanks for watching.